Hey guys, these are the notes for writing standard form. We are in unit three and our essential question is why are multiple representations important? Um, so this is gonna be your third form of linear equations. There are only three forms of a linear equation. There's point slope form, slope intercept form, and standard form. Now we previously have learned the point slope and slope intercept. I'll go ahead and write these on the sides. Okay, so we've learned slope intercept and point slope form. Um, we learned point slope form first because that helps us get to slope intercept form. But we can actually have a third form, or we do have a third form, that is going to be our standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. Now, um, as mentioned in class, all three forms are the exact same line. They just look a little bit different from each other. And they all have something in common. All linear equations, or all linear equations in this form, or in each of these forms, they all have an x value in common, and they all have a y value that's all the same. So um, those y, they're not all the same, but there are, there are, there is, oh my gosh, English, um, there are y values and there are x values in all forms of these equations. Okay, so standard form, let's talk about standard form. Ax plus by equals c. Now again, just like with slope intercept, your M and your B represent certain things. But here, um, don't freak out because there's a ton of letters. Um, a, B, and C represent numbers. So those will have numbers there um, in a little bit. You'll see some examples later on. Okay. Now, there's three requirements for writing an equation in standard form. Standard form is probably our toughest form because there are rules to this. Um, and because there are rules, they're really easy to mess up um, because you'll think you're finished, but you're not actually finished. So um, you're going to be given an equation, and it could be in literally any form. And you're going to be asked to put it into standard form. Or they're going to give you like two points. And then you're going to be asked to put an equation in standard form going through those two points. So the first requirement is that your x and y are on the same side. So x and y, your variables x and y, are, and we're going to see on the left. So we're going to put them on the left side, or on the left side. Technically, they don't have to be on the left, but I prefer to be, have them be on the left than be on the right because it kind of follows our order. So x and y are on the left side. Our second requirement is that um, your a value must be positive. I'm going to put that in caps. It must be positive. And what I mean is that a value can't be negative. So if it's negative, you have to do something to change that. And we'll talk about all that in a little bit. Standard form is probably our trickiest form that we learn. And then our last requirement is that your a value, your b value, and your c value, they must all be integers. So um, we can basically say they can't be fractions or decimals. So we'll go ahead and say that. So a, b, and c. Um, can't be, so can't be a fraction or a decimal. Okay, A, B, and C can't be a fraction or a decimal. So you basically cannot have any fractions or decimals for any of your numbers, any of your coefficients. All right, so first, before we begin, I'm just going to ask you yes or no. This is going to be a basically, do you understand the rules or do you not understand the rules? Um, so this is basically, let's say that you were grading someone's homework right now and we're trying to figure out if they got it in standard form. So starting with A, or starting with number one, 4x plus 3y equals 10. Now remember, A is attached to x, B is attached to y, and C is a constant. It's all by itself. So C is the number that's all by itself. A is attached to x, B is attached to y. Okay, well, starting with number one, is this in standard form? Well, let's go through all the rules. Are x and y on the left side of your equation? Yes, they're on the left side. Second rule is um, your a has to be positive. What's your a value here? Well, a is 4. 4 is positive, so we're good. The last requirement is that all three numbers have to be a whole number. There are no fractions, no decimals. So no fractions or decimals in number one, so this is in standard form, so yes. Number two, 3x minus 2y equals 5. First requirement, x and y are on the left side. This is correct. Second step is a must be positive. Remember, a is attached to x in this case, and a is positive. a is positive 3 here. Okay. Third step is, do you have any fractions or decimals present? No. So that's good, and that means that this is in standard form. You can't have any fractions or decimals. Starting with number 3, negative 4x plus 3y equals 7. First requirement is that x and y must be on the left side, and they are. The second requirement is that A must be positive. Is A positive here? The 
answer is no. A is negative 4 here. So because it's no, this is not in standard form. And that's because your A value here is negative, which means this person actually made a mistake and then either need to fix it um, by doing something to it. And obviously, we'll learn that in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. A is negative. So that's why it's no. Okay, number four. Negative 2i plus 4x equals 5. First, are x and y on your left side? Yes. Second requirement is A positive. Now remember, A is attached to X. Now what's weird about this? They switched your orders of AX and BY. So you could technically reorder this and make it 4X minus 2Y equals 5. Remember, you are allowed to rearrange your terms as long as you keep the signs the same. So this 2Y was negative and we kept it negative, And this 4X was positive and we kept it positive. So I like to put the X first because that's where A is. A is attached to your X in standard form. So X and Y are on the left. Is your A positive? It is positive. Your A here is 4, not negative 2. Just because that's the first number that shows up does not mean it's A. A is attached to X. So A is positive, and then there's no fraction or decimals present, so this is in standard form. Lastly, number 5, 5X minus 1 half Y equals 3. Um, X and Y are on the left side. A is positive, it's positive 5, but you have a fraction present. You have a negative 1 half coefficient in front of that Y, which makes us no. Uh, you can't have a fraction. And obviously that means that we'd have to fix it and get rid of that fraction. So can't have fractions. All right. So we're going to go ahead and convert each of these to standard form. Now remember, standard form has three rules. And that's the trickiest thing is because we always forget that third rule. Now, number one and number two are going to be fairly simple. Number three and number four are going to be more like problems we're going to see um, more often. So three and four are obviously going to be a lot trickier. And obviously, because I gave you more room to work, there's going to require a bit more work here. All right, so number one. First step of standard form is we want the x and y on the left side. That's first step, okay? Now, first step, if I want x and y on the left side, I gotta get that three over to the other side. So, we're gonna subtract three x from both sides here. Let me use a different color. Okay? Now, you, to move things from side to side, you add or subtract. So, we wanna write that x in the front. And the reason why we wanna write that x in the front is because it's ax plus by. So, you wanna write that x in the front. And that's gonna be the thing you're gonna to have to get used to. It's not y minus 3x, it's gonna be negative 3x. And that y, is that, pos is that a positive or a negative y? This y is positive. If it was negative, it would put a negative sign there. So, this is plus y equals 7. Okay? Is this in standard form yet? Well, no, because even though x and y are on the left side and you have no fractions or decimals, your a value is negative here. So to fix the problem of negative numbers or to fix the problem of fractions, you're going to multiply something to the entire equation. So I'm going to multiply something by the entire thing. And what I'm going to multiply by is, well, what's the goal here? The goal here is I need a to be positive. B and C can be negative, but a has to be positive. So a right now is negative 3. Well, what can I multiply this entire thing by to change the sign but not change the number? Well, I can multiply everything by negative 1. So we're going to multiply everything here by negative 1. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. And why do I emphasize that so much? Because we either skip the y or we skip the 7. You either distribute to one of them, but you don't distribute to the other. I don't know why people do it, but people do it. So, so distribute. Negative 1 times negative 3x is going to give us positive 3x. Negative 1 times, oops, negative 1 times y is going to be negative 1y or just negative y. And then negative 1 times 7 is going to be negative 7. I'm going to go ahead and move this down because this is like in the way of that stuff. Okay. Then the last question becomes, is this in standard form? X and y are on the left. A is positive and you have no fraction or decimal. So you are done here. This is standard form of an equation. Now, the way it started was, I don't know if you recognize this, but what form is this in? This is in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Now, remember, just like with point-slope form, it's just a different form of the line, and they actually mean the same thing. Now, you might be wondering, doesn't this change my equation? If I multiply this entire thing by negative 1, doesn't that change my equation? Technically, no. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in Desmos to show you it doesn't actually change. So the initial equation we had was we had negative 3. Actually, let's go ahead and write the original in. y equals 3x plus 7. That was the original equation. That's what they gave us originally at the very, very beginning. And then we moved the 3x over and we got negative 3x plus y oops, equals 7. Okay. Now notice between red and blue, notice they're the exact same. OK. 
okay? Because because these equations are bound, so they're the exact same. Now let's do what we did where we multiplied everything by negative 1. We multiplied everything by negative 1. So then we got 3x minus 1y equals negative 7. Well, between green and blue, what do you notice? They're also the exact same. Why are they still the exact same? As long as I multiply that negative 1 to everything, then it's balanced. Now, here's what happens if I forget to multiply negative 1 to, like, the 7. If I forget to multiply negative 1 to 7, that becomes a 7. You'll notice green and blue are not the same line. So, as long as you multiply the same number to everything, then they're still equal to each other. And then I'll go ahead and add red into the mix, and notice they're all the exact same. Okay, so we're not changing anything. We're just rearranging stuff. Number two, we want this in standard form. Remember, the first rule of standard form is you want x and y on the same side. Okay, we want them on the left side. So let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, well, x is already on the left side, but we got to get that y over. So the first step I'm going to do is subtract y on both sides and cross off the y there. So we want to write the x variable first. So the x term goes in the front for x minus y equals 3. Before you keep going, always ask yourself, is this in standard form? x and y are on the left. My a is positive, it's positive 4, and I have no fractions or decimals, so I'm actually done here. This is only one step. Now, that's super nice because it's only one step. I don't have to keep going, and I don't have to do any more work than I already have. Number three, this equation's in point-slope form. This, where you have the slope here, and then your point is here. And by the way, just for funsies, uh, slope here is negative 1 third, and your point here is positive 6, negative 1. Now, obviously, they didn't ask us to find that stuff, but it is important to recognize these types of things. All right, we're in point-slope form. we got to get this converted to standard form. So these are going to be the kinds of problems we're going to be used to seeing. So it's really good that we have practice with this. All right, first step is, obviously, standard form does not have any parentheses. So just like with um, what we did from point-slope to slope-intercept the day before, we got to get rid of these parentheses. So we're going to distribute. Negative 1 third times x, so y plus 1 stays the same, is going to be negative 1 thirds x. And then negative 1 third times negative 6 is going to give me positive Two. All right, now um, we want to go ahead and combine anything that we can. So I notice that 1 can move over to the right-hand side, so I'm going to get rid of the 1 next to the y and subtract it from both sides and subtract it to the 2 here because those are like terms. So then we have y equals negative 1 thirds x, and then 2 minus 1 is positive 1. Well, now we're in slope-intercept form, but we want to be in standard form. So this is not where we want to be, okay? So what's the next step here? Well, before you can even think about standard form, obviously we had to get rid of the parentheses. We got to get all everything by itself. And once that's settled down, then we can start moving stuff. The first rule of standard form is x and y are on the left side. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So we need to move that x to the left side. So we're going to add one third x to both sides. Okay, well that's going to cancel on the right hand side. Now remember, you want to write that x term first. So it's going to be positive one third x in the front. This y is positive, so we're going to put plus y equals positive 1 on the left, uh, the right-hand side. Now, is this in standard form? Are we finished here? Answer is no, we are not finished here, and here's why not. Yes, x and y are on the left side. Yes, a is positive, but we have a fraction present. So back to unit 1, how do we get rid of fractions? You want to multiply by that uh, least common multiple in your denominators. So notice how the denominator here is 3. So we're going to multiply everything by 3 to get rid of the fraction. So Everything has to get multiplied by 3. I showed you in Desmos, everything has to be multiplied by that one number. And if you forget to multiply one thing, then it's no longer the same equation. So we're going to multiply everything by 3. So 3 times 1 third is going to be 1, so just 1x. One 3 times y is going to be positive 3y. And then 3 times 1 here, which is going to be positive 3. All right. So we multiplied everything by 3. Is this in standard form yet? x and y are on the left. A is positive 1, and you have no fractions or decimals, so you're actually finished here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and type in this green and this pink equation into Desmos just to show you um, they are the same. So 1 third, oops, 1 third x plus y, oops, plus y equals 1. There's that purple line. And then our final equation was x plus 3y equals 3. Notice between black and purple, they're the exact same equation, so they are equivalent to each other. Moving on to number 4, similar problem to number 3. Um, if you think you got it, you can try it on your own um, if you want to pause the video. But again, this is in point-slope form, so we've got to convert this to slope-intercept to get to the next spot or to next section here. So um, first thing we're going to do is get rid of those parentheses by distributing. So y minus 5 is going to stay the same. 1 half times x is 1 half x. 
1 half times 3. Now, this is a fraction, so this is going to be positive 3 over 2. Do not write this as a decimal. Keep things in fractions. When you get decimals involved in equations, it's really hard to know what to do to get rid of them. All right, our next step here, what color did I use next? Red. As you want this to get to slope-intercept form, so we're going to get that y by itself by adding 5 to both sides. And remember, you can only add to like terms, so 3 halves and 5 are like terms because those are both regular numbers, whereas 1 half x is not a regular term number with those. So they're not like terms. y equals 1 half x stays the same, and then 3 halves plus 5 is going to give us 13 over 2. So that's going to be where our calculator comes in to help and handy for us to... Uh, to add fractions, there we go. All right, next step here is we want to go ahead and now we're in slope intercept form. Now we can basically, we're basically at number one, right? Number one, where it was already y equals mx plus b. This is also y equals mx plus b. We want our x and y on the left-hand side, so I'm going to subtract 1 half x on both sides. And the, we, re, the, reason, the reason I am subtracting is because it is positive and we're going to do the opposite, which is negative. Now, Always with that x term in the front, so negative 1 half x. That y is positive, so plus y equals 13 over 2. Now, is this in standard form? No, there's like a ton of stuff wrong with this guy, so let's fix this. First thing is, x and y are on the left side, but your a is negative, and you have fractions present. So what you want to do here is we do want to multiply something to everything, and we're going to go ahead and solve two of those problems in one. Okay, we are going to multiply by one number, and that number is going to get rid of our fractions, and it's going to get rid of our a. So let's go ahead and talk about how are we going to get rid of our fractions. Well, remember, with fractions, you want to multiply by that least common multiple in your denominator. Your denominator here is both a 2, so you would multiply everything by a 2 here to get rid of that fraction. Just like here, we multiply by a 3 to get rid of that 1 third. We're going to multiply by 2 to get rid of that 1 half, and that 13 over 2. Now, does that solve our negative a issue? No. So we're going to knock two birds out with one stone here. The 2 is going to get rid of the fractions. But how do I get rid of the negative sign? Well, what can I multiply something by to get rid of a negative? Well, you multiply by negative to make a positive, so we're going to multiply by negative 2. We are, okay, so let's go over why I'm multiplying by negative here. I am multiplying by negative because I'm trying to get rid of that negative a. And then I'm multiplying by the 2 to get rid of the fraction. So it should knock out two things at once. So here we go. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is going to be positive 1x, or just x. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is positive 1x. Negative 2 times y is going to give me negative 2y. And then negative 2 times 13 over 2 is going to give me negative 13. Okay? And you'll notice, no more fractions. And your a is positive. It's positive 1. So go ahead and box that. It is in standard form. X and Y are on the left. A is positive and no fractions or decimals are present. So we are all good there. All right. Now this is more like a problem that we're going to see more often. Um, so we have three problems left. We have this one, um, the next one, which is super similar, and then we have an inequality. So with standard form, um, we are going to be with using equations and inequalities. And standard form is the most used form, actually, in Unit 5 when we're dealing with systems of equations. And we'll get there when we get there. All right. Write an equation in standard form. So they want it in standard form. They don't want it in point slope form. They don't want it in slope intercept form. They want it in standard form. Okay? They're giving you a point, negative 3, 2, and the slope of 2. They gave you a point and they gave you a slope. So what form uses a point and a slope? Point slope form. So here's the trick. You're typically going to start in point slope form. So I'll go ahead and kind of tell you the order of things. You're going to start in point slope form, okay? If they don't give you enough information to start or uh, somewhere else, you have to start in point slope form because if that's the only information they give you, then that's where you have to start. So the first form you go to is point slope form. The second form you can go to after that is slope intercept form. That's the most. Uh, that's the second form that you can get to from there. Once you get to slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, then you can arrive in your final, final form, which is your standard form. And we'll go through that right now. All right, first form is we have to start in standard form. They gave us a point, they gave us a slope. So we're going to start in point slope form. Now remember, point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So um, go ahead and identify things here. So this is x1, y1, and then this is going to be your slope of m is 2. All right, so we'll go ahead and plug stuff in here. So y minus 2 equals uh, 
2 because that's your slope, and then x plus 3 because our x1 is negative. We plug it in. It's going to become positive. All right, so that's point slope form. That's all good and dandy right there. We're done. Next form is we're going to go to slope intercept form. So to get to slope intercept form, we basically want to go to y equals mx plus v. So we've got to get rid of the parentheses, and then we've got to get y by itself. So first step is to distribute. y minus 2 is going to stay the same. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is positive 6 here. Okay, next step is we want to get y by itself, so we're going to add 2 to both sides. y equals 2x plus 8. 6 plus 2 is 8. Now, is this your final answer? No, that's slope-intercept form. We want it in standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. So we are not done yet. we got to keep going. So we move on, and we continue trying to push this to, to standard form. So how do we get there? Well, standard form says x and y have to be on the left-hand side, so we've got to get that x to the left. So to move it to the left side, we're going to subtract. Because it's positive, we do the opposite and subtract. Okay, so remember, you want to write x in the front, so it's going to be negative 2x. That y is positive, so plus y equals positive 8. Is this in standard form yet? No, because x and y are on the left. You have no fractions or decimals, but your a is uh, negative 2, and we need it to be positive. So you're going to multiply a number to everything to try to get this to become positive. Well, we don't want to really change the numbers unless we really have to. So we don't need to change the numbers here. We just want to make it positive. So what can I multiply by to change the sign but not change the numbers? Multiply by negative 1. Okay, so 1 doesn't change any of my numbers, but that negative 1 is going to help my negative 2 become positive. So negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2x. Negative 1 times y is negative 1y, or just negative y. And then negative 1 times 8 is going to give us negative 8. Now, is this in standard form? Yes. x and y are on the left, a is positive 2, and you have no fractions or decimals, so you are finished. Now, we did three forms of a line here. We did um, slope-intercept form, which is right here. And then we did point slope form, which is right here. And again, those are all the exact same thing. I'm going to type in Desmos to show you that they are all equal to each other. So y minus 2 equals 2x plus 3. That's our original equation. And then we had y, oops, y equals 2x plus 8. And then we had, lastly, our standard form, which was 2x minus y equals negative 8. And between red, blue, and green, you'll notice they're all the exact same. They're the same exact equation, just in different forms. All right, moving on to the next problem. Write an equation in standard form given the points negative 8, 4, and 4, comma, negative 1. All right, they gave us two points here. They didn't even give us a slope. So obviously I have to find the slope because they didn't give us a slope. So let's go ahead and find the slope first. So I'll we'll do that in yellow. All right, x1, y1, x2, y2. We'll find our slope here. Oops. Okay, so slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's going to be negative 1 minus 4, and then 4 minus negative 8. That's going to be negative 5 over 12. Ooh, that's a gross one. Super, super gross. Okay. Um, so this one's on a pretty slope, so this one's actually going to be a tough one. This one actually is a good one to look at because you'll see that your fractions don't end up being the same here. So, um... We'll go ahead and start. First form we have to start in is point slope form. We're not given enough information to do anything else, so we have to start in point slope form. So we pick a point, and then we use our slope. I'm going to pick this first point. Again, it doesn't matter what point you pick, but I'm going to pick that one. So, Okay, and I'm going to use the slope. So we have y minus 4 equals negative 5 over 12 x plus 8. Okay, so that's point slope form. That's our initial form. But then we've got to convert this to slope intercept form. So that's where I'm going to go next. I'm going to distribute to get rid of my parentheses. So negative 5 over 12 times x is negative 5 twelfths x. Negative 5 twelfths times 8 is going to be negative 10 over 3. All right. Our next step here is we want to convert till to slope intercept. We're not even there at slope intercept. We've got to get y by itself. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. Okay, so it's going to be y equals negative 5 over 12x, and then that's going to be positive 2 thirds. Okay, so now we're in slope-intercept form. But again, that's not our final form we want to be, and we do want to be in standard form. So what's standard form's first step? x and y on the left side. So we're going to add 5 over 12x to both sides because it is negative right now. We want it to move to the left. Okay, now you want to write that x term in the front, so it's going to be 5 twelfths x plus y equals 2 thirds. So far, so good, hopefully. Now, 
It's almost in standard form, but not quite. A is positive, x and y are on the left, but we have fractions present. Now we need to multiply every, this thing by a number to get rid of those fractions, everything by a number. Now here, your denominators are two different numbers, 12 and 3. So remember, this is where you have to multiply by the least common multiple. So back in unit 1, we learned about least common multiples. Well, what are multiples of 3? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, so on. And then multiples of um, 12, 12, 24, 36, 48, so on. You're looking for the smallest number that they both have in common. Well, what's the smallest number they both have in common? 12. So you're going to multiply everything by 12. If you multiply everything by 3 here, you'll notice that your fractions won't go away. So obviously, if you multiply by the wrong number, you'll still have fractions left over in the end, and you don't want that to happen because the goal is to get rid of them. Now, do we multiply by negative 12 here? The answer is no. If we wanted to multiply by negative 12, it would change all of our signs, and we don't need the signs to change here. Look, this 5 over 12, this A value, is already positive. I don't want to change it to negative. I want to keep it positive, so don't multiply by negative here. All right, well, 12 times 5 twelfths is going to give me 5x here. 12 times y is positive 12y. And then 12 times 2 thirds is going to give me 8. All right, now I'm going to do this to check just to double check myself, but we have... Um, I'm going to go ahead and type this in. y minus 4 equals negative 5 over 12, parentheses, x plus 8. And then we had our final equation was 5x plus 12y equals 8. These are the same. Perfect. Okay, so we did that correctly. All right, we're on to our last problem in writing standard form. Now, we're actually going to write an inequality here, and I'll show you how you know that. So at a back-to-school sale, Maggie can purchase any pair of pants for $21 and any shirt for $7. Her parents tell her that she can spend, at most, $200. Okay, so why do I know this is inequality? Well, here's the reason why I know. It says that she can spend, at most, $200. Does she have to spend $200? No, but she can't spend more than $200. So she doesn't have to spend anything if she doesn't want to, but she can't spend more than $200 because that's her limit. So we don't know that she spends $200, in fact, so it's not an equation. All right, well, there's a couple of things we've got to note here. Well, one thing is she can buy pants for $21, which is pretty cheap because honestly, pants these days are kind of expensive. But she can buy pants for $21. Now, does it tell us how many pants she can buy yet or how many pants she will buy? No, like we have no idea how many pants she's going to buy. So that's important to keep in mind. Okay, and then it also says that she can buy shirts for $7, which is also really cheap for a shirt. But regardless, do we know how many shirts that she can buy yet or how many she will buy? No. So there's two things we don't know. And when we don't know something, that's a variable, isn't it? So we don't know how many of each she can buy. Now, there's two variables here then. Do we know how many pants she can buy? No. So let's go ahead and make that x. So x is going to be the number of pants she can buy. We don't know how many pants she can buy, but x is going to represent that amount. Okay, well, the second thing is we don't know how many shirts she, wanna buy, she wants to buy, so we'll go ahead and represent that as the letter y, the number of shirts. And you're probably wondering, does it matter which one's x and which one's y? The answer is no, because technically they're the same thing because you're just meaning, your meanings will just be switched around. So you could make y be the number of shirts, or number of pants, and you can make x the number of pants. Oh my gosh. You can make y the number of pants and x the number of shirts. It doesn't matter. So I just went in ahead and did pants first because it came first in the sentence. It doesn't matter though. All right, let's set up our inequality. Well, do we know how many pants she can buy? No, so it's x, but how much does each pair of pants cost? It costs $21, so we have 21x, okay? And then we have shirts. Well, we don't know how many shirts she can buy, but they cost $7. So that's 7y, because shirts are y, and 7 is how much they cost, okay? And then it says she can spend at most $200, so we have 200 over here. Now let's talk about these two quantities. Would I add the pants and shirts together, or would I subtract them, multiply them, or divide them? Well, here I'd add them, because I'd want to combine their cost, and their cost should not be more than 200. So then the question becomes, what kind of inequality sign will I need? Well, can she spend more than $200? No. So the amount that she spends has to be less than $200, right? This is how much she's going to spend and buy, so this must be less than $200. But could she spend $200? Yes, it says she could spend at most 200. So it can be less than or equal to here. That's your inequality sign. So that's our inequality. So go ahead and box our inequality here. 
And this is in standard form, so I don't have to do any work. This is just, can you write an inequality given your information? And yes, you can. This is really good practice for Unit 5, because you have to be able to do this in Unit 5. Um, so what are three possible combinations? It's basically, what are three possible combinations of shirts and pants she can buy? Well, here's an easy one. Couldn't she buy zero pants and zero shirts? Yeah. When we're talking about possible, it could be literally anything as long as it's under her $200 range, right? She could buy zero shirts and zero pants. So I'll go ahead and put that. Zero pants and zero shirts. Now remember, your, sh your pants here, not your shirts, your pants here are your X. So technically, this would be the point zero, zero. Zero pants, zero shirts. What's another possibility? Well, she could buy one pair of pants and one pair of shirts. That's still under $200, right? So it could also be one comma one. She could buy one pair of pants and one pair of shirt and one shirt. No, not one pair of shirts, one shirt. All right. Well, let's just talk about Max for just a second. What if she only wants to buy pants? Okay, if she only wants to buy pants, how many pants could she buy? Well, she has 200 bucks. So let's do 200 divided by 21 because pants cost $21, right? Well, in my calculator, I get 9.5, but she can't buy part of a pants. So the question is, can she buy nine pants or can she buy 10 pants? She can only buy nine pairs of pants. So if we were talking about maximum here, she could buy nine pants maximum, but that means she would not be able to buy any shirts. So this would be the point nine comma zero. Nine pants because pants is X and Y is shirts. Okay? And then let's just, the obviously I only asked for three, but I'm going to go ahead and give one more. Let's talk about the max amount of shirts she could buy. Well, let's say she buys zero pants and only buys shirts. Well, shirts cost seven bucks and she has $200. So 200 divided by seven. Oops, I have that in wrong. That gives me 28.57. So can she buy 28 shirts or can she buy 29 shirts? You have to round down because you don't have enough money for 29 shirts. So she could buy zero pants but she could also buy 28 shirts. So if she wants to spend all of her money on shirts, she could do that. That would be the point zero comma 28. Okay, so remember possible combinations, again, anything that's possible in the price range that she is given. And so that is it for writing equations and inequalities in standard form.